Hi guys, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Today is the third and final part of writing historical romances. Missed part one and two? It's all right, it happens to the best of us. You can find the links for the previous videos and the playlist for historical romances down in the description. Is this your first time here? Then welcome! I'm Nali Gonzalez, author of the new adult psychic suspense novel, Like My Mother Before Me. Every Sunday I share writing tips and advice, the self-publishing process, my occasional opinion on stuff going on in the writing world, and other fun writerly videos. Like all the things I mentioned? Then click that subscribe button and turn on your notifications to never miss the fun. As I said like a second ago, today we're covering the final part of writing historical romances. So if you're all caught up, here are the five tips to bring your historical romance to life. Oh, and be sure to leave a comment letting you know if you found any of these tips or videos for this series useful. Number one, use an outline. It'll help keep all your info in mind and in order. As a former pantser, I praise outlines a lot. In my opinion, it truly makes things easier when writing because you'll always have an idea of where you're going with your story or where you're trying to go. It also helps to pick up seamlessly if you ever stop writing for an extended period of time for whatever reason. In terms for historical fiction, you can include important notes as to why and when a certain scene has to happen. This way you aren't tempted to go too far off script and suddenly have an alien invasion happening in what's supposed to be your historical romance novel. Number two, be flexible with your writing process and method. All us writers are one of a kind. We all create and develop our own unique method to writing. With that said, the process and method of how you write each book will be different. Be courageous when it comes to that. If your old method is not working for your historical romance, try a new one. Try pantsing if your outline is just not working, or try a whole new outlining method. If pantsing isn't getting you anywhere, try any outline method or sprinting your way to a finished novel. I really don't know what it is about writing sprints, but they get the job done. Anyway, there's a lot of details and information to keep track of while writing a historical fiction, so be comfortable with and unafraid to switch up your usual writing method. You may find something that works even better for you in the long run. Number three, be mindful of your language and writing style. I don't mean swearing. Everyone swears in every era of time. What I mean is we live in modern times and there's nothing more jarring than reading a piece of historical fiction that uses modern day terms and slang. I've personally come across this and it's so upsetting because the plot itself was phenomenal. As I said in my previous videos in this series, you're supposed to be transported back into to that time. So do your very best to keep up with the illusion of time travel. Mind you, I'm by no means the writing police, but if you can save yourself the extra work during editing, be sure your characters and narrative speak and behave as they should within their era. You can be a tad bit more lenient with your narrative if it's anything else but first person, but even then make sure it flows with the rest of your story. Now remember when it comes to your first draft, this tip or rule can go sit in a corner until your manuscript is done. That is only if you don't mind putting in the extra effort of correcting this during editing. I just said it in tip two, be willing to change your process. If this means writing your entire manuscript in a modern voice just to get it done, then so be it. Just make sure when you are done, you go back and fix it. Which leads me to tip number four, take advantage of the editing phase. It's okay if you ignore or mess up tip number three, especially if it's the rough draft of your novel. Your biggest focus is to get it written, but once it's written, nitpick the hell out of it during edits. Compare your plot and characters to the research you did. How's the accuracy of your story? looking? How about structure? Is there proper character development? Be thorough and go chapter by chapter to ensure the flow of the story. When you finish with that, you're going to go over it again and number five, polish your manuscript. This is a great time to read through your story like a reader and handle any spelling and grammar mistakes. Keep an eye out for repetitive words and phrases in both your prose and dialogue. Remember to have shorter sentences during fast paced scenes and use longer sentences and sometimes paragraphs when it's time to slow things down. If you need help there, you can check out my video on pacing. I'll link it up in the cards and down in the description. Once you've got this part of polishing your manuscript done, it's best to get someone else's eyes and opinion on your story. That's right, I mean beta reading! Be sure that when you recruit beta readers for this project that they have an interest in historical romances or at least historical fiction. Betas can catch any of those spelling and grammar errors you may have missed, but they can also give you a heads up if the historical side of your story makes sense, if your characters are believable and properly developed, and more. And those are the last five tips to the writing part of writing historical romances. Remember to leave a comment if you found this video or any video of this series useful. Give this video a like so I know to make more like it. And subscribe to my channel for past and future videos on writing tips and advice. I post new videos on Sundays, so turn on your notifications so you never miss my face. And follow me on social media and join my mailing list to always be in the know of my novels and current writing projects. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time.